good crank case bleep. <laughs> All right. Grab a beverage and hold on. Okay. Hey, this is David with Haggerty and our Redline Rebuild updates. We are knee deep in our Subaru project. Uh, cleaning parts and of course ordering parts and waiting for them to be shipped to us and all that jazz because well quite frankly that's called life it takes time to get stuff here regardless if they're on the shelf or not and sometimes they're not so we're moving forward with some projects and trying to understand uh, I'll say some of those upgrades everybody keeps talking about one of which is on the oiling system now I'm trying to wrap my head around this not being a Subaru guy but I've been around a couple motors and I'm understanding things maybe incorrectly. So the idea is to take this stock pump that is smaller, let's call it nine millimeter. I think that might be the right number and replace it with an 11 or a 12 millimeter pump. Well, that's fine and dandy. makes a lot of sense to me. Bigger pump, puts out more volume, should be solved, right? But as I understand the problem with the Subaru stuff is when they run high RPM for a long period of time, they starve themselves of oil in the pan. Well, if I have a bigger pump, don't I just put more of it in top of the head? And that's where it has an issue as far as draining back. So I need to understand that. If anybody has that thought there, by all means, send it to me. I'd love to understand how this is gonna work. And maybe there's a upgrade within the head, you know, like an extra port or something like that to help drain back. And again, maybe I'm completely misunderstanding it. But to go with this oil pump, we are going to ditch our stock pan and do the upgraded pan, which is an STI pan. And of course you gotta have a correct oil pump pickup to go with that pan. When they get here, we're gonna see what they look like. They might not be any different. I don't know at this point. So moving forward out of our Subaru project, because we're waiting, we're gonna move over to something, well, a little more spectacular in my mind. We have our 37, 40, 55, 62, whatever your Ford race car you want to call this. In here, we have all the front or rear suspension hung, mocked up, um, mounts, all that stuff is, is done and ready to be, well, quite frankly, disassembled to be painted and put back together. Uh, we've gone through and put in a drive shaft loop, which would be required in a racing situation. So that way, if your U-joint uh, breaks on your drive shaft, it keeps the drive shaft kind of in here. And I'll tell you what, it makes a lot of racket when this end breaks and it walks around and wobbles and wax and all that in here, uh, but it saves your arms from getting hit by the drive shaft. Mm -hmm. Moving up forward, of course, our transmission has been done for a while now, but we've also got our uh, Hurst shifter that kind of came with the car that's been highly modified and you'll notice that when we get up to the top but we have all the linkage and everything straightened out here so now it should be good from a shifting and operation standpoint we've also went through and cleaned up what are actually rear wishbones off of a ford moved to the front end to work as we're really kind of like a trailing arm or radius rod. They weren't quite exactly, you know, let's say it's square or even close to being the same. So uh, went through and cleaned those up, straightened them up, re-welded everything, got those better. Obviously our front wheels are mocked up. Let's, uh, let's drop this down. We'll kind of show you the general attitude of the car and some of the things we've done up top as well. looks more like a car now right so we've gone through and when I say we I mean Jeff has been helping me out and he's been doing a phenomenal job and uh and really bringing some things together that I quite frankly haven't had time to deal with because I'm well dealing with that Subaru motor so we've gone through and made some just patches to this we're not trying to do a concourse restoration and roll this out at Pebble Beach. This is a race car that gets made functional. So for instance, this had some rust holes in here. It needed a functional patch made to hold it together. Uh, likewise with the back corner over there. Uh, similar to the uh, above the A pillar, we had the same type of thing here. And we're doing things that already were done by the, by the owners in its previous life, that's the way patches were made. 
even though this is a dirt car, in the day they did run some glass in the front windshield. Typically you would not on a dirt track because, well, it'd be covered with mud like on the first turn. And no windshield tear off, so you don't put the windshield in. But what we did is we made it removable. So if they want to boogie down the road, they can do that. And we're not going to get too excited about the cracks in the glass, again, based on what it's going to do. But then you also see in here, you know, when you're on the track, we have some bars in here. And the whole point of this is, is to catch something coming from the car in front of you, potentially a starter, a bumper, you know, things like that, that would come across. Okay, get our hood back off. Now, part of the whole function of this, we have to have a viable cooling system, and one of which is this uh, new uh, radiator, aluminum radiator, and Jeff fabbed up this nice shroud to help pull air through the radiator. Um, one of the things I think some people miss out on is, I see a lot of people run uh, radiators without, and fans without a shroud. Uh, when you do that, well, you might as well just take the fan off because all it's doing is beating itself in the wind. Uh, it offers very little cooling effect on the coolant or the engine. Uh, you need to have some sort of shroud around the outside to draw that air through. That's how fans are designed to work. So in this case, put your fan so it's not gonna hit the radiator and then you wanna have at least an inch of it or about the center of the fan blade, you know, hanging in and hanging out. That way it offers as much draw as possible. And again, of course, good duct work and all that jazz, and he did a nice job. Again, period correct as far as, you know, just some spot welds around here and then some rivets to hold everything together. It will be fantastic. And then of course, this is now removable. So two bolts, this pops out, and, uh, and then the, the motor and trans will come out in a whole lot easier than before. It was kind of rigged up where this post was right in the way and tend to make kind of a draggy spot for the oil pan when it came out. So seat is mounted in position for the average 5'8 tall guy, might say like myself. And then um, removable steering wheel. We have a nice uh, uh, console or dash here for our gauges. It'll be quite simple. We'll have a oil, water, and a tack. Of course, the tack is only for setting your initial um, idle and making sure you don't over rev things. Um, quite frankly, if you're racing and you're watching a tack, uh, you're probably losing because people are passing you while you're concentrating on something that's not on the racetrack. Uh, we did put a steering quickener in here. And what that amounts to is it's a two to one. So for every one turn on the wheel, you get two output. The idea behind that is you don't need to be doing this. This is not, this is how kids drive in the, you know, on the, on the floor in your living room. Um, race cars don't drive that way. You should be easy in, easy off, and that'll help that out so you're not uh, oversteering the car. Of course, we have a clutch pedal mounted and we have a brake pedal in here and we're working on getting the accelerator pedal in. Also, we're doing the tunnel, tunnel work and then you can see our highly modified Indy Hearst shifter um, that's been cut, bent, twisted, pulled, shifted over, um, but will now clear everything, go in reverse, all that good stuff that it needs to do. Now, one of the dilemmas that we got into is overall packaging of our, our brake and pedal systems. Initially, the plan was to have basically two stock master cylinders up here and do a dual reservoir for the brakes and then a single reservoir for our cl hydraulic clutch. Um, basically, at the end of the day, they wouldn't package. So we kind of did a 360 with it and pulled this brake and clutch master cylinder. It's, it's a combo, it's one unit, but it has two cylinders, but one reservoir. And you can lightly see they're labeled brake and clutch, which is usually opposite. So we had to do a little finagling with the, with the pedal assembly. It's kind of an old hot rodder trick. The pedal assembly and this are out of like a 63 Chevy pickup truck. Uh, they use the hydraulic slave cylinder. So this is going to work really slick because now we got uh, everything packaged in here in the tight spot that we have and, uh, and should work very well. 
Uh, lastly, we're working through, uh, we did here just the other day, is finished up modifying some stock valve covers. If you go way back when, when we started this, you'll see that we looked at the stock valve covers. They had some stanchions on them already for breathers, um, but they were kind of cobbly and looked a little ugly. So we went through and smoothed those out, got rid of all the, the stock tangs and stuff that are on there for holding spark plug wires and all those jazz. We plugged the two holes here and then added a hole and then used an existing hole to put the riser in. Now we have two crank case breathers. Say that 14,000 times in a row without twisting your tongue up. And uh, that will allow the crank pressure that builds up naturally to vent. Um, you put those on the left hand side of the car because you're turning left, but everything momentum wise is going to the right. So instead of having the risk of your oil getting pushed up out of these breathers on the right hand side, you let the air come out on the left hand, which is where it's going to be at. And uh, that's kind of it. We oh, did package in a steering box out of a, oddly enough, a 66 Chevelle. Um, got looking to see what would work well. And I happened to have one that you could use as a mock-up and said, wow, look at that. It's perfect. So now we're, let's see, we're up to a Chevelle. We're up to Chevy, Chrysler, Ford. I'm not sure what else we would add to this. We got, I think, all those three covered quite well in our vintage dirt track racer. I think that's a nice ring. It's got a nice ring to it. Yeah. Vintage dirt track racer with one impeccable cage. Oh, we'll say that. Let's see what, oh, last, check these out. Jeff did a wonderful job on these. Um, and Cerakote did a nice job as well. So we have our, uh, this happens to be the uh, right side of the car, the, the header tube. It's all one piece. It fits in there marvelous, goes right down the side of the car. Um, and it's been Cerakoted in and out. Um, Spencer did tell me it was a big pain in his behind to do these because they are so big. They do a bunch of headers, but he's like, I've never done one as tall as that. And when I mean tall, it's taller than I am. So it's gonna be good. I love it. It's gonna look gorgeous against the black paint when we get there. And uh, we got a few things more to obviously to wrap up on it, but we are getting close on this. But of course, that can't be done until that's done. Till then, get out in the shop, go get your work done. Hopefully you enjoyed going through the old project that's gonna be the new project and all that. But uh, most importantly, get out in the shop, get your work done. See ya.